a brick building on a cloudy day. Hey everyone, so I'm standing here right in front of the Association for the Blind. Apparently it's the oldest in Scandinavia. It was established in 1900 and we just are cold like showing up. So I don't even know if I'm going to get to talk to anybody or interact with anyone. So stay tuned. See what happens. A cane guide leads to the building. There's a cane guide. She follows it to the doorbell. Right here. They enter the building and meet a dog. Hey cute doggy. <laughs> Mona walks around the store and stumbles upon some toys. Um, what is this? This might be a braille a globe. Uh, Mona. No. Mona takes the globe. O she inspects M it. Freaking G. Okay. Okay, it's tactile. It's a tactile globe. This is so cool. Oh my god, I can feel that there's a continent here. Yeah, so I see. This is Africa. This is Asia. This is Europe. This is Australia. Okay, how accurate am I? Very. Really? That's awesome. She finds some board games. Ah, oh, I bet you this is for a chess board. <gasps> and she meets an employee. Hello, my name is Espen and I am working at Adapter Hjelpemidler. This is apparently a store with a lot of assistive technologies, yeah. correct? If I was blind living in Norway yeah. and I wanted assistive technology in my kitchen, like brilled, yeah. you know, measuring cups and stuff, yeah. I'd be able to get them for free? Yeah. Uh, First you have to show yeah. eye doctor and give a, a report. After that, uh, you can uh, try to get uh, different helping, uh, helping products. Mon receives a pair of shades from Espen. So hi everyone, so one of the things about my eyesight is I still have light perception and I have some light sensitivity I've been noticing. Like if it's really bright out, it actually ends up hurting my eyes. So having shades, I've noticed, has been really good, but not all kinds of shades. So if I wear these, they have protection on the side and even at the top, that really helps. I don't know. I basically just got a pair, but should I get these too? She smiles know. at the camera. Apparently they have green lenses and that's my favorite color. Stay tuned. So Espen basically is low vision himself and you use some of the technology that you have created, right? With your business? Yes. That's yes. awesome. That's really That's awesome. That's correct. Yeah. Meeting the team behind the Norway Association for the Blind and Partially Sighted. Hi! <laughs> partially Sighted. Tell me a little bit about what you do here. I'm a part of the policy department. Oh, okay. So, cool. so we're promoting universal design and the rights of people partially sighted or blind. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you find the public transportation? In in Norway? Well, to the different places. Oh, Tokyo mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. amazing. Mm. I did not feel like I needed any eyes at all. So we should look to Tokyo. We should look to Tokyo. Okay. The whole world should look to Tokyo. <laughs> they had cane guides that led from the door of the train all the way to the door of the bus if you needed to. They had soundscapes, so little sounds of running mm -hmm. water, you knew there's the bathroom. Little sounds of birds, you know that's the exit. Um, sound when you cross the street east-west, different sound than north-south. Mona in Tokyo crossing the road. I was like, what is this? It was so, you should watch the episode. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. should watch the episode. Mona holding a Barbie doll box and got me the Helen Keller Barbie. Mona's flabbergasted. Here you go. Okay. Hey everyone. <laughs> I'm standing here in Norway, in Oslo, at the Nor like the Association for the Blind, and apparently Helen Keller is a Barbie. And it has <laughs> braille on the front and Yes, the back. and the back. The whole thing is bra oh. <laughs> Intriguing. I never played with Barbie as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Not, maybe now. As an adult. <laughs> Mona waves goodbye to the receptionist. Wait, bye, Mona. Bye, Mona. <laughs> Her name is Mona. She's an amazing receptionist. We were standing outside. We didn't know how to get in. And we're like, no, no. and she just opened the door. <laughs> oh, wait. I think my flight is boarding in 30 minutes and the airport's 40 minutes away. Mona takes a car to the airport. Oh, we're really, 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 really cutting it close. Most likely we'll miss it, but we're going to try. We're trying. Our driver's trying really hard to get us to the airport on time. Let's hope I can make it to my next adventure. Mona at the airport. She makes it to her flight. We did get to the gate and the doors were closed and then they opened it up and we got on the jet bridge. Stay tuned. <laughs> on the next episode of Planes, Trains and Canes, Mona in Casablanca, feeding pigeons by the square. They watch the World Cup.
Mona calls home. Oh my god, Mama, the energy. We caught it on camera. What's up, Lalo? Mama, it was like one of the coolest experiences. Mona and the city of Morocco celebrate on the streets. Credits The Plains, Trains, and Canes team Mona Minkara, Natalie Guzzi, Benjamin Jimenez, Elizabeth Janney, Chrisa Harmon, Prithvi Rajmacha, Hazem Abu Khosh. Plains, Trains, and Canes is made possible by the Massachusetts Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and in part by the Graham Foundation for Advanced Studies in the Fine Arts. Please like and subscribe and press the bell for future notifications. Please tell your friends and your enemies and everybody else in between. Thanks!